Hi, this is Jake. You're in Jake's shop. Tonight I have Kieran. Say hi, Kieran. He's helping me today. We're going to do these subframe connectors in this car. I got these from Art Morrison. They were prefabricated. Um, I've actually had them for about eight months or so. I haven't really gotten to them, but had a little surface rust on them. So uh, my buddy Kieran here helped me out. Uh, he's my middle child. And, you know, it's no, not too early to ever teach kids how to use tools. Um, so, yeah, it was fun. He got to get try this out and I'll throw that video up next uh, after I switch the camera around but um, here's the subframe connectors going in and I'll show you how I laid these out from Art Morrison um, there's fabrication involved but there is whenever you do weld in subframe connectors um, so I've never seen anyone do these before but I've got the way I do them so I figured I'd show other people as well good component of the car to keep it uh, extra stiff in there especially when you get a little more of an engine in these cars you know you, you definitely want that structure through the through the bottom so I'll flip it around and we'll go from there okay so for layout on these things here's what I did I actually took a string line a chalk line and I found center line which I used off of this hole from the rear subframe that's actually spotted welded into the car so that was my center line from the back and obviously the center line in the front is the first attachment point on the rear of the subframe so I, I made a chalk line I measured off of center of chalk line to find set, to find the uh, two outside edges of where the subframe connector is going to go through. Um, from the center point, actually, when I had the frame in here earlier, I kind of made some marks in here to kind of get me a distance where I needed to go. Obviously, I've got the original subframe that I can use as well as some measurement points. So anyways, that allowed me to get the, the cut where I, where exactly where I wanted to get this cut and notched out to fit in here. Um, you can see I haven't done the lower one yet, but here's my chalk line. So this actually holds slightly off center of the subframe. So anyways, found, found center line. So I'll basically measure from the center of that blue chalk line to the outside edges of where I want to channel that back. Um, the other tricky thing is, is on these subframe connectors and a lot of them that I've seen, they actually, they're not into the pan the full distance. They, they stop around back in here um, where they protrude back out of the pan so they can connect right to the subframe. I'm not doing a lowered subframe on this. It's going to be the standard depth off of the bottom of the pan. Um, this isn't going to be a super low car, so I'm not too worried about that. Really, all I needed to do, um, I still needed to use uh, solid uh, subframe bushings. And I think I have one of those around here somewhere, the other half of it. Uh, th that sets my distance off of the base of the pan of the car. So the only other thing I need to do is figure out, you know, roughly how far, this isn't welded in yet, I just basically shoved this in here. But the subframe itself, after the bushing distance is in here, sits off about three and a half inches. So I just measured out that distance plus the distance. So this will be perfectly flush with the bottom of the subframe. I'm not, subframe is designed to move around in here to get it squared, perfectly squared. And before you use solid bushings, there'd be rubber bushings in here. But once this is set, it needs to be set. So in the meantime, I need to, you know, when, after this gets welded in, um, I'll have to square the body of the car up. And then these plates will get welded to the frame after it's, the subframe itself is perfectly squared off into the car. Um, I'll slide this out here and kind of show you what it looked like. You know, I just notched it back. And I went ahead and left the major steel portion that is in this car that the frame's welded to intact and I actually notched the subframe connector to fit around it. So the up the longer half obviously is going over the top to meet the rear of the subframe and the inner piece, I'll show you what the inside looks like next, um, is going to well is going to come up around into the bottom of that. Um, kind of throw a light in here see if you can see it but See, that'll go up where I've cleaned that weld up. It'll go up inside there and weld all to the inside of that structure and it'll come right through the bottom of the floor pan. So obviously the carpet will have a little bump in it in the rear seat, but uh, shouldn't be very noticeable. Um, I mean, obviously if you're looking for it, you're gonna be able to find it, but uh, you know, I could, I could do more fabrication on these subframe connectors and probably notch them out a little bit on the base where they come through there and then re-weld steel and stuff. But uh, you know, there's, it's not gonna be that noticeable. Um, you know, before the subframe connector, this is what it looks like. It's just this is how you get it from Art Morrison. You know, just nice piece of tubes, tube, uh, square tube steel with a flange welded on the end. Um, and you know, those tabs could be cut off and rewelded back into place or whatever. I'll probably just leave them for now. If I need to cut them off, I will. So yeah, I'll probably do some time lapse of me tacking and welding some of these in. And you know, basically, if, as long as you get this cut perfect and clean it off, um, you know, you'll, that'll weld in really nicely. Um, you know, you can see where I ended up stopping here. It's obviously going to be near impossible to get that welded from the inside without taking the seat pan out. 
I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to seal it um, from the outside, which is probably not perfect, but I'll be able to get really close to it. And then by how much undercoating and everything I'm going to have under here, it's going to be really solid, um, really sealed up. Because um, after these get welded in, I'll do the, the video on uh, the rest of the undercoating process for this car and clean it all the rest of the way up. So on to the next step, I'll uh, get the other one cut out and I'll probably show some time lapse welding in and then the finished product. Okay, so I finally got these uh, subframe connectors pretty much in. Um, I've got the I've got the bottom one tack welded. I'll finish welding that off camera, and you know, really after that, it's just cleaning up the weld a little bit. And I'm probably going to end this video with this right now. Um, I've got them notched. I've got them placed. You know, there's a couple things that uh, are really tricky when you're putting these in. Whenever you're doing a subframe connector, because um, you want to make sure that the distance from the pins back. You have enough. You have enough distance there to actually get the subframe in and, and get it squared away. Um, so I'm probably about a quarter inch, maybe slightly less, where I, I know that the subframe will end. That way, it gives me a little bit of room to make sure that it gets square when I'm done. Um, so yeah, I've got the welds. I just I haven't really ground any of these welds yet, but you can kind of see where they're in there in the bottom of the pan. Um, it, it's really tricky when you're welding a lot thicker sheet metal um, to or steel rather to sheet metal. It ends up, um, you know, focus the weld right on the on the on the thicker part of the weld rather than the thinner stuff, and then blend it in as you go. You can kind of rock it in there, but you know, I've I've had a little bit of practice, especially when you're dealing with older metal versus the newer metal. Um, the older metal metal doesn't seem to, you know, there's porosity in it. There's it really have to get a lot cleaner, whereas the newer metal it's really easy. You just clean it up, and it, it you don't it doesn't take anything to weld the right to that. So yeah, these are um, these are looking really good. I've got them real in there exactly where I want them. You know, on this one, I ended up uh, notching a piece of steel and blending it directly into the frame itself. Um, because I've never done these before, I actually put them in upside down. Um, but there was plenty of leftover steel. That's a great thing about these uh, Art Morrison steel pieces. You know, they're so modifiable. You can pretty much do whatever you want with them. And there's a lot of flexibility. As um, long as you're not afraid to fabricate, it 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 they're just perfect actually for this application you know they're, they're cheap and they're really easy to put in um, so yeah I'll, I'll finish this up um, you can see I've got the bottom one tack welded up now um, put a couple welds in there and tack welded it uh, you know I wanted to make sure that the distance up and down was also exactly correct for what I have when my subframe so um, I'll finish welding this off camera and then the next the next uh, video I probably do will be cleaning this and priming it 2k primer um, I'll show a little bit about mixing 2k primer and undercoating it um, I've got some pretty cool stuff for that that uh, I'll be throwing up on the next video we've got uh, I, I ended up getting some Transtar stuff online it was a good deal and um, I've actually think this is a great product um, and then I've also going to use the 3m undercoating the body Schultz this stuff's awesome um, it's it takes probably, I would guess on the undercoating of this car, just this portion of it, it's probably going to take two or three of these. Um, if I want to go ahead and do the wheel wells in the front and some other components, it'll take more. But I'm going to lizard skin the inside of the entire car, so um, there won't be any need for that. But yeah, I hope that was uh, halfway informative. It was kind of fun for me, and we'll go from there. Thanks.